welcome to the Starting Over Podcast. This, uh, the, I am your host, Edward Shelton, a.k.a. Dark Logos. This is a show where we talk about strategies and tactics behind the game of Heroclix. Uh, you will notice that uh, you hear not just the fan, um, but the muffled TV in the background. Uh, that is because I'm recording during the day, on the weekend, uh, during Gen Con, uh, waiting for news. Uh, so, uh, in the midst of that, we have uh, some cool stuff. We're going to talk about uh, Wolverine the X Men uh, whole set being spoiled, and I have none other than my best hero clicks buddy, well, one of them, uh, Mega Lotus Man. Say hello to the nice people. Hey, hello, everybody. Yeah, we're we're recording on Skype. He's not in the house this time. Uh, so uh, we're we're going to go through. We're going to pick out some things that we like, uh, some things that we don't like, uh, and make some comments and speculation. Um, now. Normally, like I said, normally I, I, when I do these set reviews, I normally do it like a couple of days after, so there's some things that, after a set release, so they're clarified on some things. But uh, I got Mega Lotus Man here, so uh, we're just jumping the gun a little bit. All right. Uh, starting off, I, what do you think of that Wolverine, uh, number one? I, I think for 100 points, he doesn't really stack up to some previous you know, set-based commons that, that we're used to getting, but I think he's okay. That Wolverine annoys me. Um, you know, he's, he's he reminds me too much of the Wolverine that we got in GSX and um, uh, uh, Web of Spider-Man, except for he's got charge in that case. The only advantage that I see to using him over them is that he starts a 12 attack. That's something. Um... The much more interesting option, I feel, is uh, the Gravity Feed Wolverine. At least he's different, anyway, than those other guys. Uh, he, he has traded regeneration instead of the I heal once per turn. But, and, um, they still, or hang on a second, I'm using this page. They still, the problem is, I hate that Wolverines all have six health. Like, they have regeneration stuff. But they all have six health. So as an experienced player, I just know to deal six damage, and they're done, and I don't have to worry about them. Yeah. Whereas, you know, Cyclops has seven. You know, it, it, there's lots of it. Spiral has eight, you know. Yeah, in, in the meta where six damage isn't that hard, I I sort of feel for him. And, I mean, yeah, you can say he has damage reduction, but really, I mean, unless you mess up and knock him on the Invincible... You're you're going to knock him out. He's, he's he's out of the out of the picture. I hate to say it. He needed to start with Invincible to almost guarantee that he would live. But they either need to do that. They need to make him different for one thing. He's just too much of the same thing. They need to make him scary enough on his top click that you can't ignore him. Because normally when I fight Wolverine, I either you know deal the six damage to him or I wait until I can't. You know. So okay, if someone's going to deal the six damage, that's fine. But uh. You can at least stop the people who want to wait until they can, make them scarier, you know, up front, instead of relying on things and claws like half the people. You'd be, you don't have to worry about them. You're like, oh, he might just do one damage or whatever. Yeah. So. Also, they tried to make him like the Days of Futures Past Wolverine, except I feel that they failed. Like, uh, remember that one from Fantastic Forces? Like, that was, like, the best Wolverine for the longest time. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, I, I, that's just how I feel. Whenever I see a Wolverine that starts with like a twelve attack and three damage, I'm like, "Yep, that's a Days of Futures Past Wolverine." Well, to me, the best one is easily uh, the Tab App one, which I would recommend to anyone. If for no other reason than unlike all these other Wolverines, he can't be one shot, which is the most annoying thing in the world because that's the easy solution for a competent team to deal with the regenerating Wolverine. Just oh, well, you're dead, so regenerate that. Yeah, you know. Uh. Colossus, I think, is just overall okay. Uh, you know, you just collect him for your uh, your team base. Is he on a team base? Yeah, he's on. Yeah, he team. goes. He's on the uh, gold team. Yeah. Uh, Colossus is one of my favorite characters ever. This is this hundred point one is good, solid for the points. Um, the and he might get used on a team, you know, because he's nice and low enough points you can put him on X Men without him, you know, bloating the team too much, but. Um, you know, I've said this before that I, I don't understand. I think it's uh, a little bit annoying that they don't just give them multiple dials. I mean, if you're only going to give Colossus seven clicks of health, 
that's fine, but can you please give, I mean, why wouldn't you just put a 150-point version on the same dial that had more clicks ahead of it? You know, it, it's a waste of points in those cases. Yeah. And, and especially, especially X-Men. X-Men uh, have irked me this way forever because they are justified, they're very powerful characters, you know, maybe not like the Justice League necessarily, but, you know, just under, um, in that by themselves they can, you know, have massive amounts of power but they also need to fit neatly on a team, just like the Justice League. So they need multi-starting lines for one when you just want to run that character because they're your favorite, or when you're just trying to do a big X-Men team and trying to fit as many awesome people on as you can. But they don't do that. Yeah. All right, let's uh, skip down a bit. Um, and I know this is going to seem a little bit weird. Uh, let's let's skip down to Oracle, number five. Uh in, in a realm of Jinx and Scarlet Witch and still, uh, what's the other TK prop chick, which escapes my mind right now, which is sort of sad. Uh, Enchantress. Enchantress. Well, why do we need a 49-point oracle? Um, and that's how I'm sort of feeling. Um, and even more so, I, I sort of feel that uh, I can use... A uh, forty-nine, two forty-nine point oracles at a two hundred point uh, she uh, she are imperial guard, and be like, take that Justice League. I have two probs, two two barriers, uh, a team base, and plus nine to map. What you gonna do? You know, uh, <laughs> if you can, if you can hide your team base behind two barriers, well, she can actually push the crap out of it. Yeah, yeah. The she are the imperial guard, are pretty cool. That would that would give you a nice theme team. You get a pick map. Might even be able to pick a map where you don't need to use the barriers. Yeah, but I, I mean, like, so so what's your view on Oracle? Because outside of being with the Shi'ar team, I do not see any advantage of having her because she doesn't. I, I feel like she doesn't do what the meta needs her to do. I mean, prob and barrier and smoke cloud is nice, but no, she doesn't. I mean, she's she's a filler. She's there because they wanted to put her on and they need a dial to populate her with, but. Um, I mean, she's not the top meta, but, um, you know, most pieces aren't, so they're just not going to be. Uh, she's good, though, good enough. Like, if you used her, you'd find use for, like, in Seals, you know, she'll oh, yeah. be a piece that, you know, you got to pay attention to. Yeah, I, overall, I just, I, I, I guess my frustration comes in is I think that in the end, all she's going to do is just create a... A situation in which, for for lack of a better word, she's there to inflate the power of uh, the Shi'ar Imperial Guard, and that's it. Yeah. But, like, yeah. They had to have somebody to go with them. Well, there's a Shi'ar Shulcher down there. Yeah. All right, let's... Let's... Sorry. Oh, well, yeah, that's, that's cool. Uh, let's, let's move on to Toad. Uh, since this character hasn't been in Heroclix for, what, how many years? Like a ridiculous amount. Uh, yeah, since the second year. Yeah, so uh, he uh, gloriously returns nine years later to uh, still sort of be questionable. Uh, wh what's your thoughts on uh, Toad? Oh, I mean, he's Toad. I don't think anybody could have, you know, expected him to be that great. There's also two versions of Toad, again. Um, why they didn't just put him on one dial, save everybody money. Uh, well, I guess not them money. Whatever. Uh, he's okay. Uh, I haven't looked at him a whole lot. Um, what has he got here? Some leap climb thing. Feeling characters. Yeah, I remember that. It's it's like uh, he's got like a minion power similar to Doppelganger, except much 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 worse. Um, like you have to give a friendly character power action and you can just move him, which is boring. Um. <clears throat> And then he's got, like, uh... Well, I mean, in, in the era of Pogs, that's not too bad. Yeah, I mean, but, I mean, what, what are you going to do? You go up there, now he does one damage. Who cares? Well, uh, well I okay. look at it. The Stranger's uh, Machines give Toad a free action. Roll a D6 that can't be re-rolled on a result of 4 through 6. Toad can choose a standard attack power. Uh, he can use the chosen power this turn, and his range value becomes the result until your next turn. So I, I think that's sort of cool. You can pick yeah, his last or precision strike. It's before he dies. I think what he is is, from looking at his dial, I think he's supposed to be a tie-up piece. He's got the leap climb plasticity. Uh, a friendly character could move him to them. Like, suppose they are 
already adjacent to an opposing character, and they can't do damage, they can bring Toad in. His dial is built such that he's hard to hit up front, but if he does take a hit, he'll land on that, possibly land on that uh, that back dial where he's actually reasonably formidable. Mm -hmm. I think if you pl that must be what he's intended for, because that he would actually play that pretty well. Yeah. Um, I'm going to do something. I'm going to move my little mic thing a little bit closer, because I realize I probably have way too much background noise. Um, anyway, uh, let's... Uh, Keep rolling. Um, real quick, uh, what do you think of uh, Dazzler? I think Dazzler. Yeah. I gotta read Dazzler. I haven't looked at her. Yeah, they think I. I do give Whiskey's credit. They are trying to say, "Hey, we're married, dating, in a long relationship. When I am teamed up with this character, I get, you know, bonuses. I, I like that. It, it makes you think about playing um, more." sort of actual comic book based characters instead of just saying like, hey, you fit this role, let me just play you, you know. But at the same time, you're not necessarily like tied into playing that specific long shot, that specific dazzler, that specific storm, you know. Um, you have a little bit of wiggle room. It's just as long as that character is named. You well, know? it's especially good for, it's like, the equivalent of theme teams, but to a more specific extent, which is good for if you personally happen to be a big Dazzler or and Longshot fan from a long time ago, you'd be like, cool, I'll play these together, and you know, they'll get the plus one. I personally have never even seen anybody use that one of those mechanics yet. I don't think, anyway. I've used um, it once with Storm it, and uh, Black Panther, but... But if they took two of my favorite people and did that to it, I'd be like, yeah, I'm gonna do this. Yeah, uh, but she looks actually pretty decent. I would, you know, not meta again. Not not much is, but uh, very functional. I mean, if you uh, had her on your team, I don't think you'd be sorry for it. She's got really high stat. Well, not really high, but she's got good stats, good powers. Uh, her running shot into stealth thing is uh, pretty usable. No willpower, but she pushes well. So I don't think there's much to complain about there. Only seventy five points. Well, I also like the thing is, you know, she already has a token. You can uh, give her a free action, and characters within four squares can't use stealth until your next turn. Now, now here's the thing. This is this is the mixed bag I feel because it doesn't say opposing, um, and if you have stealth, Dazzler is not your friend. Uh, but if you don't have stealth, Dazzler has the potential to be the equivalent of um, Clark Kent from. Uh, Brave and the Bold. Um, yeah. I, I know that's way far back for most of my listeners. They don't, they're like, oh, Brave and the Bold. Man, you know, what's up? That's an old set. Anyway, uh, Longshot, I, I, I think he's going to fill that same, this role in Sealed that's going to be, hey, guys, you you pull uh, you pull me? Yeah, play me, man. Because guess what? You're, you're going to need some prop, buddy. You didn't pull any prop. Like that, like that's what I think Longshot's going to turn into. Yeah, he's good. He's more fun and interesting than he is like solidly good. The main thing that people had, I mean, when he came out, people were excited because you know he has critical hit, you know, automatically critical hit, and that went to their heads. All it really means is he deals. And this it's, it's really another way of wording that he deals an extra damage to each character that he hits. So you get more benefit, more damage if you target more characters. And that's about it. Um. The one ex a, uh, exception to that would be if you can find a way to get him energy explosion with those three targets and automatic or critical hits. Um, that'll be uh, the money. Yeah, I think also it would end up, Well, yeah, just more reason to play more Gizmo. That's, that's really all we're saying. But he, he's very decent. I don't think you're going to feel bad about playing him uh, in non, you know, topest level ever stuff. But... Uh, uh, that that's the main thing with him is that he's not as good as he sounds, but he is still just good. He's very decent. Yeah, All right. potentially exploitable in that one situation. Yeah, yeah, with Gizmo. All right. Uh, next up is uh, Shatterstar, the uh, would be possibly shining piece of this set if it was not for Spiral. Uh, X Portal once per game gives Shatterstar a power action. Play Shatterstar and an adjacent friendly character of a lower point value in any adjacent square on the map. 
Uh, twin blade, two twin blades. Uh, Shatterstar can use Blaze Claw Strengths and Flurry. Uh, I would have loved this if there was Spiral, no spiral. exist. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it does what Spiral does, except you just say, "Hey, it's balanced." Like you, yeah. you can't open the hell now. But we'll, we'll get to Spiral later. Let's talk about Shatterstar. People would still find a way to exploit it, but uh, you could. It would be one character's going through, and they're staying there. Yeah. yeah. It's a one-way trip. Yeah. Um, but Shatterstar is very good. I mean, again, uh, if, he, if you look at his dial, you're like, okay, it's not that amazing. But when you look at his points, he, he's actually pretty amazing for them. I mean, only 73, that's only a quarter of your team. And he has full damage potential, hard to hit, uh, team functionality with that teleport. Um, Tons of good keywords, too. Yeah. I mean the the he's a decent figure. I mean in seals would be great. Again, not top level meta. I'm not to say that for everything. Nothing is top level meta. There, we'll get that out of the way. Except for things that are stupid, and we'll mention those specifically. Yeah, we'll uh, mention those specifically. Uh, but we'll, uh, okay, I I mean like I I sort of feel that the character is a good 73 point charged blazer, blade claws, fangs character. I mean, if you can get some stat mods up there and, you know, hey, you know, get that flurry action going, but I, I could never recommend this character outside of a X-Force team or an X-Factor team. You know, and I would hate to say like this, even New, Mut New Mutants really doesn't need him, you know. The, the beautiful thing about these characters and what they have done a good job with, despite a few failings, is that if you like Dazzler... If you're a Dazzler fan, if you're a Longshot fan, or you're a Shatterstar fan, these figures are good enough that you can use and be threatening without being, like, a joke. Because, I mean, that used to be a problem where you're yeah. like, oh, like, uh, somebody mentioned, you know, bringing Quicksilver, and I'm like, Quicksilver is just, he's bad. He's hes poorly costed for what he does. These are not that case. No, they're not the most meta thing ever, but they, I mean, if you want to use them, they are threats, and they are costed very uh, well. Yes, aggressively. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, let's let's move on. Uh, strong guy. Now, some people might say, "Why are we focusing on strong guy?" Uh, temporary kinetic absorption. When strong guy takes damage from an attack, he can use battle fury and giant reach ability, uh, and increases combat values by the amount of damage taken until the end of your turn. Uh, the main reason I'm looking at strong guy for a lack of a better word, is hammers. Hammers, hammers, and more hammers. Uh, I think he's probably one of the best characters suited for the, uh, what is it, uh, for using the Book of the Skull. Um, because once you give this guy a hammer, and he has giant reach, you know, uh, that quake is going to be ridiculous. Uh, also, the, the fact of giving him, like, perma charge. On, on his dial, so if, if your opponent hits you too hard and you get those plus three stats, you know, that that's going to be ridiculous. Or, or even just saying, hey, you get uh, only take one damage, so you have plus one stats. You would have a capped attack and four damage in charge. So, I mean, no, he's he's pretty well costed. Uh, you're, you're right. I mean, I didn't think about giving him hammers because all I was looking at is he needs something because as it is, he is too manageable for your opponent to control. Without uh, but, hammer, yeah. Yeah, because they take away his charge, and then he's just not a threat. I, I will say, if you use him, watch out for Pulse Wave, because that will stop his trait from being effective. True. So, you know, we need to talk about Deathlock, because... Death oh, you want to talk about Deathlock? I thought... Can't was... skip over Deathlock. Ah, uh, okay. All right. Let, uh, I'll, I'll let you start since you want to direct the, the conversation there. Okay, well, you got the uh, the original death lock I'm pretty much going to skip over. Um, he's cool, good for the points. Uh, x force which is cool, starts with stealth, which makes me sad. I hate, personally just hate characters that don't start with moving attack if I want them to be good at the game. Uh, most characters that don't start with some form of move attack or another are not that great. So they can get a hammer. Yeah, but, I mean, you know. It's still best when you have the option of starting, you know, and not having to stop and pick it up. But 
yeah, I mean, hammers are helpful. Um, it'd be nicer, though, alternatively, in a 300-point game, if he just started with a running shot, then you give him the bat belt or something. But no one's going to be doing that with Deathlock anyway. He's not that great. But the Prime version is who I actually secretly wanted to talk about, um, is just pretty cool. He's a little expensive, but he can do a lot of damage. And uh, he has the maximum carnage keyword for some reason. I had I had uh, yeah. not a lot of point to this. I just yeah, he can use that maximum carnage ATA. He also is a robot member of Shield, uh, a scientist and a soldier. Um, he also can use Marvel Knights ATA, which would give him stealth. I, which is sort of funny. Um, the no killing protocol. I hate that. I really, really hate that. Yeah, they're trying to make it fun or balanced or whatever, but but they make it's all this other OP crap. You know, like he, I pay 154 points. He better be killing stuff. Well, yeah. especially since he's a prime. If he didn't have that, I don't think anybody would have questioned it. <sighs> um, but. Uh, the the problem I have with him, I like him because up front he starts with the ability to do five damage. If you give him the maximum carnage uh, team ability, that goes up to like ten damage. Um, but and he's got the and he ignores uh, super senses and stuff with his uh, precision strike. But the problem is, is his worst click is like his top one for for damage deal. So I mean, I I, I just like that a bit. He's interesting. He'll be cool. Um, well, I don't. I probably not an expert, though. I mean, yeah, but yeah, I forgot. That you, I always forget that you can turn that into attack. Um, but you want that damage. So what if you got a 154 point character who you know will hit, but only do three damage? That's not terribly exciting. Not today. Not when that could have been um, the New Mutants team base or something. Uh, but yeah. he's cool. He looks cool. He'll be, he'll make a fun prime. I don't know if I'll ever use him. He's just too expensive. And while he may be worth his points, they're not very well organized, his clicks. Okay. All right. Uh, we're going to move on down to the uncommons. And you're going to be like, Dark Logos, no love for multiple man. If you listen to Push to Region, trust me, you're going to hear enough multiple man love right there. So I'll, I'll let the professionals of Jay and Rob dissect multiple man. Uh, so cheers to them. Uh, going on to Cyclops. Uh, X-Men team ability, 7 range, 94 points. Uh, the Summer's Brother trait, I, I love it. Uh, it only really applies to a handful of characters in the game and is comic accurate. Um, concussive Blast, uh, Cyclops can use uh, Force Blast and Sidestep, which I think is is very nice because you you have two options. Um, you can you know always you can always force blast with your range actions. Now we have it somewhat you know front dial, uh, front loaded. Uh, we also can uh, take those that free action and sidestep in attack or attack and sidestep back, which I think is going to be the interesting development in the meta. Once people realize, like, oh, yeah, I can shoot and then move around the wall. And this I can use this like a ghetto hypersonic speed. Uh, overall, uh, his stats are cool. Then the uh, better leader than you are, Cyclops can use leadership. When Cyclops hits an opposing character, that character loses all keywords and can't use leadership or team abilities until your next turn. And I wonder how are they ruling this so you can get rid of Power Cosmic. Because if so, that would be awesome. And you then, can get rid of Power Cosmic with it. Yeah. So, he's scary that way. And then, uh, not only that, I, I feel, is the fact of, hey, guess what? All that ATA stuff with your uh, Ghost Rider, that's gone. You know. And the Mystics, the, um, I mean, uh, I actually really like the Cyclops. I'm torn between him and other Cyclopses. Uh, the problem mainly being is just that all the Cyclopses are really good. Um <sighs> So, I mean, the only thing that's missing on him to me are the things that are on the other Cyclopses that I wish he also had, but he's well costed for what he does. Um, he'll be, he'll, he's a, a team-based member, so one of the things that will make him the strongest is whenever, you know, the team base is up, you know, in the thick of it, and Cyclops just comes out, you know, makes when he drop their team abilities, and then the team goes to work on him. Yeah. That's the... 
that's a nice thing. Is his biggest problem because of his uh, sidestep instead of running shot or whatever? I mean, is getting into position potentially, but have to remember he can just come off the team base and go crazy. So yeah. Uh, next up is uh, Gene Gray. Um, do you feel forty point TK does that have a place in the meta? I mean, all she does is TK. It does. I mean, I think the figure's stupid. Um, I don't. I don't like it. Uh, I think it's too generic. Uh, it looks like trash in the the current you know generation of te- of dial building. It looks like the figure from uh, Infinity Challenge. On the it other is, hand, it, it pretty much is. On the other hand, as long as it is singularly the cheapest TK, it will always have some place or another. You know, on she will f- she will fit on some teams that Scarlet Witch won't. So th- for, therefore. She has a place, albeit probably marginal, and if you have the 10 points, you'd be foolish to not spend it on a better TK. Well, and see, here's the thing. I look at it, okay, if you say what advantage does she give, it's like literally if it's that 10 points, then you fit in a utility belt. Like, I, I, I never thought we would get to the point of like, yep, it's so absurd that you can put in, you know, 10 points can matter that much. And, and completely change how a team is run. Well, it still does in that, you know, 10 points will change what characters fit on the team, and, you know, there's such a wide range in there. I mean, it, there's just in the vast uh, range of things that can be built, you know, f- at some point or another, somebody's going to be like, I wish I could get TK for 40 points. I think they would have been better to, um, I don't know, if they were going to make her this crappy, I, and considering the state that the game's in, uh, they should have just, like, went for it and made her, like, 25 points 30 points, you know, something like that, with singular purpose of t- TK, you know, because um, that would match up better compared to the people who have TK and Perplex and, you know, other stuff, but for 50, you know. Yeah, I, I can sort of see where you're going with that. Possibly make her unique if they do that, but... Uh, uh, if they did that, I wouldn't want it in an uncommon slot, but... Well, whatever, whatever. Yeah, well, I, I wouldn't want her to hire one. I'd be pissed off if I got a rare, and I was like, oh, this is a piece of junk. You know, but I'm just saying that I think if they were going to go that direction with it, just be the cheapest TK, I think they should have undercosted a little bit more. Um, just because... I mean, I wouldn't say that if they hadn't undercosted so many other things in the game anyway. So, I figured just go for it. If their goal in making Spiral and making all these other teleport stupid things that get people across the map in one turn, why not Jean Grey? You know, get you a cheap way to get people halfway across the board, third of the way across the board, you know? Yeah. That seems to fit in with their current mindset anyway. Yeah, and so it's, it's going to be interesting. All right, uh, next up uh, to our future nemesis, Sunspot. Behold the, the, the broken coming. Uh, let's let's uh, break him down and why we're a little bit frustrated personally about Sunspot. Um, I... I you might look at his dial and you're like, you know, Dark Logos, you own that stuff, man. Like, what's what's going on? What's so wrong with Sunspot? You know, it's it's the fact that once he's combined with his team base uh, on the rookie level, they can just pop him off and he becomes a pulse wave death demigod. And uh, it's like, oh, we're about to kill your Sunspot. Nope. Remove a, a character from the New Mutants base. Sunspot's alive. Let's, let's break it down for these people real quick. Um, uh, if you guys don't know, uh, we'll explain. If you do know, sorry, bear with us. Uh, if you look at the Sunspot, his last three clicks of life are Running Shot, Pulse Wave, and phenomenal stats considering he's yeah. only 65 points or potentially 5 points coming off of the 100-point uh, New Mutants team base. And he flies and he's, he, has, he, deals, uh, he has 6 range. Yeah, he flies and he has six range, so three range pulse wave, and his defense is actually really high, 19 in close combat, which he has control over. Um, so the problem with him is is that when he comes off the rookie base, he comes out on the best click on his dial, which is completely counter-logical. Uh, it's the 11 attack pulse wave click, whereas if he comes off of his uh, experience base, which theoretically he should be better, higher up his dial, uh, he has that terrible, like that first click of uh, sidestep with nine attack super strength, who cares? Um, the problem isn't just, though, that he comes off on that 11 attack pulse wave click. Um, that is very strong and very good and almost worth playing by itself. However, if you look at the, uh, team, the team base that he comes off of, they have a special trait. Uh, Edward, if you'll, uh, 
share yeah. it with them? Uh, pretty much, and, and I'm scrolling all the way down uh, to, to bring it up. But New Mutants has an ability which they can say, like, hey, guess what? When one of our characters would die on Solo Adventure, um, okay, here we go. Self-sacrifice for my friends. When a character began the game attached to the New Mutants, uh, to the team base, would be KO. So that, that means Sunspot. You may remove a character from this team um, base and remove it from the game. Turn the damaged character to its last non-KO click and heal it of two damage instead. So it puts it right back on 11 attack uh, in Pulse Wave. So you're, you're pretty much Sunspot stays on the, the click he pops out on. Well, yeah, he can, he can the way we figure it, he can be killed about, uh, it'll, you have to kill him four times to actually kill him. At, well, which, if, if you don't go and try to kill the new mutants, that is. If you don't try to kill the new mutants, but we're assuming the new mutants is safely on the opposite side of the board, um, yeah. next to Spiral. Or, or uh, something like that. But, uh, if you don't, I mean, that's, that essentially makes him 12 damage, you know, 12 health long with, uh, you know, pulse wave, high attack the whole time. So I'm not sure. Are they a seven? Car I don't think they're a seven. I think you probably get two. No, we looked at it. They're 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 seven. They're seven. Uh, oh yeah, they have, yeah. they're a thirty-five point spread between them and there. Oh yeah. So yeah, you could you could pop off four characters and and it's you still well three, but the fourth so time three, you would oh, yeah three because you have you have to have three on the base. Yeah, and he's one of them. So. Yeah. So I mean, overall, I. It's frustrating, and it, it. This is again, people, why you have friends that that pay attention to the meta um, with you. Because if Megalos man ever brought this up, I wouldn't have thought about it. And then the more I thought about it, the more broke things that I thought about creating. So, uh, well, it's just the, the nice thing is, and the thing that people will have to remember. He, this may not be the most broken thing in a hundred point or three hundred points, but. The team base itself to get the sunspot only costs a hundred points to begin with. Yeah. Even if it goes straight down, who cares? It's a hundred points. You do it in a big game. This is just another piece in a large team of theoretically broken exploitive things. You know. So for a hundred points, you get that. In addition to him, you still get the hundred point team pace, which by itself is reasonably effective for the hundred points until it gets hit. But uh, you know, so it's it's the the important thing about it is it is very powerful considering what you're actually paying for it, yeah. which is only a small, relatively small percentage of your team. It's not all there is. You, you got to build on it and elaborate on it, um, which we have not done, but... Uh, yeah. Yeah, there's... there's the, the thing is with the New Mutants coming in so cheap, you can create a lot of different variables uh, in a constructed game with this, with this, and it's ridiculous, but... Uh, anyway, let's let's move on because I know we could sort of stay here all day. Um, uh, next up is uh, Starbolt. Uh, is is this the second coming of Starboy, or is this? You it know, sure feels like much. it, doesn't it? He's <laughs> like the exact same, <laughs> except I don't know. He looks better in ways, worse in ways. He doesn't have um, the Legion of Superheroes team ability, uh, which frankly would have been weird if he did. Um, <laughs> A, a little too much team ability envy. Yeah. Um, but, you know, he gets some hypersonic speed peppered in there. In fact, you push him down on a quick two, that's not worthless. Um, but uh, he's, he's solid. You know, he'll, he'll be good in seals. I don't see anything broken around him. You know, he's just pretty decent. Yeah, that special power giving him psychic blast and pulse wave, I, I think is awesome. Um, the one thing I do hate is when Whiskit says, hey, man, we're going to give you Psychic Blast and Pulse Wave on hypersonic speed clicks. And yeah. it's like, uh... Um, the the in-dial enhancement, I, I will say, is quite good. Um, I, I actually in, enjoy that. I feel that it it gives you some options, so... Yeah, I always like uh, late dial... Uh, whenever they have late dial abilities that don't require stats and like playability to work, now he actually is not worthless at the end of his dial. But um, characters like if that Jean Grey, for example, who's worthless, you know, at the end of her dial, if she had some passive power 
you know, or even just like Force Blast, something that she could use for free that didn't require her to be a good piece. That's the sort of thing that I like to see. Uh, if they're going to be weak, I like for them to have powers that don't require they have stats to be functional. Yeah. And so there's there's a lot of, I think, cool functionality um, in that that overall character. I, uh, You know, once you once you get past that, oh, is this, uh, is this, uh, what is it, Starboy 2.0, it, it, it starts to become pretty fun, um, I think. But, uh, okay, uh, while my computer transfers a massive file over to another hard drive so that I could keep recording, and hopefully I don't sound like a, a robot right now, uh, let's, uh, let's talk about White Queen, uh, White King. Um, as long as my head survives, uh, when White King's first uh, KO click is revealed, instead of being KO, keep turning the dial as normal for the uh, for the damage taken up to click 12. Uh, White King is removed from the map, and at the beginning of each of your turns, heal him one damage. Uh, when click six is revealed, place him into your starting area. If all other friendly characters are KO'd or no longer on the map, while White King is not on the map, he is KO'd. Uh, his special power, the Reavers are mine to command, and so are you. White King can use leadership. In addition to normal effects, when he succeeds, he uh, he may remove an action token from adjacent friendly characters with the Hellfire Club or Reavers keyword. You uh, know what this guy screams to me? What? Uh, Ice cream? Uh, no, um, he is essentially, I mean, you recognize this trait from Mr. Yeah. Well, Mr. Immortal from the Captain America set, uh, who was also worthless, who also had the addendum that he cannot be masterminded onto. This character does not have that. So I'm seeing him standing next to GSX Magneto and some Hellfire Guards, you know. Well, and, and the other thing I also see as well is if he dies, I'm sort of in that so what, I don't really care. Um, yeah. He does it. He's really not an offensive juggernaut. Now, when it comes to being Mastermind Fodder, I'm on a mixed bag because 107 points for Mastermind Fodder is a bit much. Now, take, you're... Into, take into account this as well, though. Magneto's range defense is usually somewhere about 21. Therefore, people have to get in close to really do anything good. That makes White King a nice, nice little charge bodyguard type thing. In addition to, if you'll notice, his the Reavers are mind to command damage power, he can take action tokens off of Magneto. So, yeah. he performs multiple roles here. I'm not saying it's worth it, I'm just saying that he his, he's multifunctional in that situation. I, I think also the one thing, and we'll get to it later, is when you start combining that with the Hellfire Club team base, I think you could start getting some very interesting aggression out of them. Um, the Reavers... You're, I, I never was really too much of a fan of those figures, but I think that it's, it's going to be okay. Now, I sort of wish that it just said keywords, because I could see him on some scientist teams and some robot teams just tearing stuff up, but, you know, I, uh, yeah, I, yeah you, you, you can sort of see where that would have gone if, if he was able to do that. Tony Stark. Yeah, the the problem with him is going to be like I actually think he's very good, with the exception of that when he comes back to life he goes in your starting area, which means that, you know, he's probably just going to be out of the battle after that, even if he comes back, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Like if you had him on a Magneto team, even if you had him on the team base team, uh, you know, once he's reset back that far, it, he's got a long way to go. Yeah. All right, uh, let's move on. Now, this character, if this was like Infinity Challenge, he would be the strongest character in the game, but it's not Infinity Challenge. Uh, Flatman, uh, no affiliation, uh, range zero, 28 points. Uh, keywords, great like Avengers, scientist. Uh, trait, I'll just slip under this door. Flatman ignores walls for movement purposes, which pretty much is pretty awesome. Uh, stretch attack. Flatman can use giant reach ability. Not so awesome with one damage. The smartest man in this closet, at least. Flatman can use outwit, but may only target characters of 100 points or less. 
What, what do you think about him? Priced at 28 points. I think he is crap, but his cost is that of crap. I mean, you're only tw paying 28 points. Worst case scenario, you get an outwit that works half the time. you got full dial plasticity, so, I mean, he's going to be a solid tie-up piece. He can go through walls. I mean, he's not worthless. Um, you could use him. His defense is relatively high. I think you're looking at a tie-up piece um, that occasionally, or other, against certain teams or people, will be able to use outwit, which, you know, that's not bad. Um Almost all teams have characters of 100 points or less, and especially in like if you were talking about a meta, you know that means that those characters are doing something important. So taking away a power that they have is valuable. Yeah, I, I mean he he's Great Lakes Avengers actually, just like the that Mr. Immortal that we were talking about. So I think those characters are supposed to be goofs, you know, to begin with. I, I sort of feel that this is he's going to pop up one day and he's going to mess up one of my teams. Like, I, I just know, like, one day someone's like, Dark Logo's been playing all those cheap guys. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to play, like, three Mr. Immortals and completely ruin his team. Uh, I, I mean, other than that, I just, I, I don't see him performing well overall. I see him being one-shotted more times than not. Um, and, and, and more importantly, I think the, the, the biggest thing is he's supposed to try to perform this tie-up piece slash blocker role with uh, his plasticity, and he just doesn't have the ability to do that. He, he doesn't have the dial depth to do that, so I, I don't know. I, I think he's he's a little bit nah. I think he's nah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he's nothing, but he's also 28 points. I mean, can you think of anybody that's 28 points or less that can take a hit? You know, I mean, it's, it's filler. That that is a valid counterpoint, and and I yield to your your valid counterpoint. Uh, okay, uh, let's let's move on. Uh, this character I think just yells, "Give me a hammer!" Um, uh, Corvus, uh, special power, Blade of the Phoenix. Corvus can use Blaze Claw Spangs. When he does, instead of rolling a D six the first time, he uses the power. The result is five. Each subsequent time he uses this power, the result is one less. After he uses, uh, after he uses a result of two, the next result is five again. I think this is awesome because you give him a charge hammer. He charged blades, hits for five next turn for four. That's nine damage. I mean, it's, it's never it's, bad. It's, yeah, um, he's always. Uh, the thing is, his damage on his actual dial is so low, his points are so low, he would actually make a really good filler on a hammer team that already had I wouldn't make him the center of attention, but... Yeah, I would straight play him. Uh, I mean, just finding a way of dispersing hammers, you know, to him, I, I just think is awesome. Um, oh, uh, overall, I, I would say this is a definite pickup for trying to get the drop on somebody because most people aren't going to be paying attention to him because he's not like a marquee character. Oh, well, he's good. The, the Fangs and Claws turns me off until you realize he doesn't have Fangs and Claws at all. Fangs and Claws is, is random. You never know what you're going to get. This dude you can plan for. You know exactly what he's going to be doing every time. There's nothing wrong with that. And for 64 points, the fact that he can do 5 and 4 damage is uh, very good, you know. So, yeah, hammer it up. Yeah. All right. Uh, next up. That said, uh, I wouldn't. I probably wouldn't use him without a hammer. Yeah. Yeah, that is true. That that is true. Uh, I'm gonna skip skip Death uh, Deathbird and Cersei. Um, even though I will briefly say Cersei, probably one of the the best primes that we've had in a long time. Um, not Brother Voodoo awesome, but like as a real support figure, she's really strong. But, uh, well, they have the, 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 in this day and age, to ha to be a support character, you don't have to have a support power. You have to have two or three. So, yeah, that's what she's got. So, good yeah. for her. All right, let's look at Havoc. Uh, we'll skip the Summer's Brother thing and Destin Duo <coughs> traits, and we'll go straight to Plasma Discharge. Uh, when Havoc makes a ranged combat attack targeting an opposing character and has a direct line of fire, uh, the area of of effect for the attack includes all other characters occupying squares adjacent to uh, the squares. The line of fire passes through. 
the target is dealt damage normally, and each other hit character is dealt one penetrating damage. I feel if you're able to use the following two things, it would be the most devastating damage possible. Dr. Octopus Arms and Gizmo. Dr. Octopus Arms to give him more targets and Gizmo to give him energy explosion. And watch, just watch the death happen. And, and it'll be ridiculous. So, It's a lot of work, though. It's, but, a, yeah. it's a lot of work, but I, I think it would be worth it. This dial bothers me to look at. The last, I mean, nothing specifically to complain about. It's just the last half of the dial feels like, um, what's his face? Sunspot, but worse, and more points, and doesn't have a um, team base to come off of. But, again, he had, just like Cyclops, he has seven clicks of health. Why do the Summers brothers have seven clicks of health and Wolverine has six? Lunacy. That's why. I, uh, yeah. But, I mean, overall, I, I think that this, like, for Sealed, he is probably one of the best pulls that you can get in Sealed. Um, yeah, he's not bad. And, and Constructed, I, I think there's a lot to be worked around. Unfortunately, I hate to say this, I the only keyword that I think that really needs his muscle is uh, Brotherhood of Mutants and, well, Star Jammers, but who plays Star Jammers? I, if you play Star Jammers, email me. And uh, I will give you a shout out uh, next show, which will pros will be about Gen Con. Um, so yeah, hit hit me up uh, definitely if uh, you play Star Jammers and you are a Star Jammers fan. Uh, but anyway, um, moving on. Uh, I I don't I don't want to talk about Polaris. She just makes me cry inside. So. <sighs> Is it she's too good, too bad, not what you want? Not not what I was expecting. The whole magnetic crush thing, I thought that that was okay. Look at her, look at her dial. Look at the layout of her dial compared to Havoc's. It's the exact same thing. Actually, you are correct. That's weird. I think it's exactly just really good. stats, too. Yeah, I mean, it's, it must be in purpose. They're a destined duo, apparently. Um, so, so how the heck is she more points than him? I guess TK inflates things. Maybe. Oh no! Except that four damage. That's why. Yeah. That four starting damage, and and then she has two targets, and he has one. Oh, uh, that and look at her uh, magnetic crush power. She. That's uh, what I said. It's 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 not what I wanted. No, it's awkward. I mean, it won't get used hardly at all in a normal game. It doesn't work with running shots, so. Uh, it's, it's not going to come up a lot. When it does, it'll be nice, though. The, the issue I come in is, is when is the last time that someone has functionally said, I am going to TK my opponent? As, as much as people complained about Nightcrawler, as much as people have complained about, oh my gosh, you're able to move my guys wherever, people fail to use TK to move opposing characters around. So, oh, it's because TK is a... Standing position, I'm going to move you, but I'm not moving me. Uh, so your character is using an action to not deal damage. She's also more points than Nightcrawler. Um, to not deal damage and to not hide. So you, you're saying, I'm going to put myself out in the open, wait a turn, because you, you can't even use TK after being TK. So you got to stand there, wait, then move them, and then either you're pushed or wait. So, I mean, whereas Nightcrawler can, you know, just move and, I mean... TKing people as a power action is kind of a hassle. If she could do it as running shot, it would happen all the time, I promise. But you can't. It's uh, not uh, not terribly worth it. Yeah. Most of the time. All right. Uh, moving on. Lila Miller. Minions of Doom. Uh, four range, 79 points, X-Factor Detective Future. I thought she was the... She hanged out with Dr. Doom for a bit, I think, and... Also, she went with multiple men to the future to find out, like, which future worked or something like that. Um, I, I forgot. I know, like, they went and they saw the uh, Days of Futures Past and they saw... No, or was it Days of Futures Past or they saw the uh, the reality that Bishop came out of? 
I don't know. I didn't read it. I, well, I read part of it. Um, anyway, uh, Soulless Resurrection, which I, I don't know that about her. Uh, once per friendly character, uh, when an adjacent char uh, friendly character of 150 points or less would be KO'd, you may give Lila Miller an action token. If you do, that character is not KO'd. And instead, heal that character to any click and remove all action tokens from it. At the end of your t uh, next turn, even if this power is, uh, I guess, lost, it says last, uh, KO that character. Uh, I think this is good because it gives you a one last hurrah. I'm going to just, just punch you in the face. Um, you know, hammer, hammer the face moment. Um, I, 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 I sort of feel that that's really good. Uh, but she gets it on the second half of her dial, and I think she really needed it on her first part of her dial to make her sort of stay back. Uh, mm -hmm. I, anyway, uh, I know stuff. Uh, Lila Miller can use Outwit and Probability Control. Uh, when she uses Probability Control on an attack roll, uh, you may uh, choose hit or miss if the final result of the attack on all targets matches your choice. You may remove an action token from Lila Miller uh, or an adjacent friendly character with the X-Factor keyword. You almost, I, I hate to say it, it's almost always worth betting hit just in this game. Well, it would just depend. I mean, if you're trying to roll an 11, you'll say miss, you know, whatever. Yeah. Depends on the situation. Yeah. But I don't know. Well, I don't know. But what, what, what are your thoughts? Uh, she looks too expensive and awkward for me. Even with outwit and probability control? Uh, yep. If she were 50 points, then we could talk. Uh, that is apparently <laughs> the, the quota for having, um, multiple supportive powers. Uh, her other power, I mean, she's functionally not attacking anybody. She's never doing any damage. That's not what she does. She does have that cool soulless resurrection thing at the end, but it is at the end, so she either has to push twice or get hit softly by an opposing character in time for it to matter. So I don't care about her. Yeah, she's okay. too much to be. I mean, not, I guess you probably could use her. She might be interesting, but I'm not too excited. Okay. Um, we'll just keep uh, going down. Um. Uh. Okay, uh, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna leave this conversation to you for a moment, um, because I I I always have a mixed bag when it comes to the vampires, uh, Sauron. Um, well, the vampires are awesome. Sauron's awesome too. I I mean, so here you 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 elaborate on that, and I because I'm I'm always like ah vampires. Ugh. Vampires are good. The vampires are fun. That's why they keep making them. Uh, this Sauron is good. The main thing to look at at Sauron is that he's probably worth 100 points if you compare him to, like, Wolverine or something without having the vampire ability, you know. So the fact that he can make himself crazy awesome is just gravy. That's the way I look at it. Um, he only heals If he only heals up one, he, he's only okay. But if he heals up twice, he's pretty good. He does never have willpower, so it's going to be hard to maintain uh, keeping him up there, but who cares? It's only 100 points. Can't have it all. Uh, we did miss Husk, though. I don't know why we missed Husk. Husk is only 100 points, and she's pretty awesome. She always has either invulnerability, invincible, or impervious, um, and she has permanent shape change, and she has, like, nine clicks of health for 100 points. Uh, she's not amazing, but, you know, whatever. Yeah. Uh, well... Husk is a character I grew up with and I liked, and it got sort of creepy when she started dating Angel. But uh, she, have you seen her recently? She's no. gone. She's gone nuts. She's like dating Toad, or was dating Toad, and joined the Hellfire Club, and she's acting like a total uh, bad person. Um, I think she might be under influence of something else, but they haven't elaborated on it yet. Um, but she's just kind of gone nuts. But I think this dial's worth it. I mean, the thing is, is it's not that expensive. It's very solid. It's a huge defense. You know, fi the the trick to it would be figuring out something useful to do with it. It's not very offensive. Yeah. 
All right, uh, let's uh, jump down to the rares because I know our time is sort of running down. Um, uh, let's. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm skipping Bishop because I I can rant on him all day. You don't uh, like the Bishop? I, I his defensive I, power is pretty cool. I li I like him. It's it's just that I know I would spend way too much time talking about him. He is. I mean, you like you like the dial then though, because I mean he. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. At least he does have five stop clicks at the end of his dial, doesn't he? <laughs> if you get lucky. <laughs> when Bishop will take damage from an opponent's range combat attack, roll a d6 instead. If the result is 1 to 3, he takes 1 damage. If it's, uh, no, look, look, look. Uh, when Bishop would, uh, take damage from an opponent's range combat attack, roll a d6 instead. So you don't take the damage. Instead, if the result is 1 to 3, he takes 1. If it's 4 to 5, he heals 1. And if it's 6, he heals 2. So he can only take, unless he gets that wood or something, he only takes 1 damage. But half the time, he heals 1 damage. Yeah, which would say, like, behold, the perfect person to revive Infinity Gauntlet tech. But unless he gets outwitted or something, he, I mean, he's even even statistically more likely to heal because uh, one-third of the time he'll heal for two instead of one, but he will never take full damage. Yeah, like I said, the behold, the person to revive Infinity Gauntlet tech. Um, I, like I said, I would talk forever about him. I don't hate him. I sort of, I, I sort of think he suffers from black man hero click syndrome, which is his stats are sort of crap, and then his cost is way too high. Uh, he has five stop clicks. <laughs> I mean, they're not stop clicks, but they are essentially. I mean, he only takes one damage at a time. This dude might live forever. <laughs> That's assuming your opponent's team. You know, isn't like the downside is he can be hit through it. If he's not on that power when he gets hit, like if you hit him for seven right off the bat, he's done. Um, but if he gets down there, I mean, it could be incredibly frustrating. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's let's go on. Forge. Forge is 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 I think it's a big character to to focus on. Um, first off, he has an intuitive mechanic: give Forge a free action and he, and heal an adjacent character with armor or a robot keyword or any adjacent vehicle of one damage. So your cop car, your invisible jet, all your Tony Stark armors, Iron Man's, uh, pretty much, uh, you know, your robots, your Sentinel, your Master Mold, all that stuff, he's just like, bam, free action, I heal you. Um, and uh, let's see, neutralizer gun. Uh, when Forge hits an opposing character with a ranged combat attack, before damage is dealt, choose a power that character can use. Uh, that character can't use that power or any combat or team abilities until your next turn. So pretty much he's just neutralizing everything. Uh, yeah, don't forget that that includes um, team attack and the uh, asset dial. I mean, those are all abilities, you know. Yeah. So, so he's, he's also probably never going to hit a team base, but whatever. Well, that's another story. We'll we'll get to that a little later. Uh, device crafting. Once per game, give Forge a power action if he occupies the same square as an object, and remove that object from the game. If you do for the rest of the game, Forge can use Perplex, even if this power is countered or lost. So, for ninety points. He has Mystic Soldier, X Corp, X Factor, X Men keyword, which I think is sort of strange. He doesn't have armor or robot, uh, considering he's a cyborg. He's uh, also a member of X Force these days too. But whatever. What? Yeah, whatever. But he he can shut down opposing characters, plus give himself perplex, plus heal for ninety points, and has okay stats. Is is there really a downside to him? Downside is he naturally has not particularly any offensive ability. Uh, if he had running shot to start, um, maybe you can get him a hammer or something. Uh, the, the place that I see him for myself is uh, he will probably be on um, some Sentinel teams. Like, they've done a lot for Sentinels recently. They got the robot uh, ATA. There is? I haven't seen it. I need to look at it. Yeah, it came out of Gen Con. It's like when two adjacent friendly characters that can use the robot keyword are next to each other, one of them, or maybe the highest point one, can use uh, Perplex uh, oh. once. But uh, they've done so much for my Sentinels in the past 
short amount of time. Like, we got the, the Book of the Skulls to get their attack up. We got Forge, who can apparently heal them and perplex them. Yeah. Um, and then uh, and then the ATA, I think uh, you're going to have a pretty rough game in a few months. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Please don't, please don't bring anything good to it. <laughs> oh, gosh. But he's solid, but he has no, like, offensive ability. He has no mobility. So... I can say Forge is good situationally, but unless you are an expert player, I mean, he's probably going to lose most of his uh, potential to positioning. You know, he needs that, or, you know, it's not going to do much good to have him. Like, his neutralizer gun, it would be hard to position him and get him into a position to use that. The better the character that he can use it against, pretty much the harder it's going to be for him to get in position and use it. You know, like, if you're trying to catch the Justice League, good luck, Forge. Um, so. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll agree with that. I'll, I'll agree with that. All right, moving on down the line, Magic. Again, more silliness when we combine her with the team base. Uh, teleportation disc. Magic can use facing teleport and carry ability. She may carry up to two characters if both have new mutants keyword, regardless of their combat symbols. That's that to me is the big deal is that she could carry them regardless of their combat symbols, and she could carry the team base. Yeah, she can carry the team base, and the main point being is that she gets she can get pooped off of the team base, and immediately escort it away. Away, right. yeah, and and then definitely if you're looking at at the higher points, the travel through limbo, like hey, guess what? Give magic a free action and double her speed value. If you do at the end of the turn, deal one unavoidable damage. Uh, to her on or uh, to her or one of the characters she carried this turn. So pretty much she has was it double time in yeah. phasing. That I, I said, think, probably would never use it. I mean, well, not phasing. She has double time. Yeah, but uh, what I mean is that she's 102 points. If you're using the new mutants, you're probably going to want Sunspot. Uh, and you know, with the exception of 300 point new mutants, which means that Sunspot doesn't even work. He only works at 100 points. You know, I don't really see using her ever. Just because the new mutants are not good enough without Sunspot to use, and you can't really pull them both off. You know what I mean? Yeah, I could. I would more so say, like, if you were to play them at 300, or, yeah, play them at, at 300, you would just have her off first, and then sort of tank, <laughs> with the lack of a better word, with Sunspot. And and then once he would take enough damage, then do his little trait thing, do the little trait thing, and uh, he's going to go back to that awesome eleven attack click. But uh, that's that's how I see it. Uh, okay. Moving on, uh, let's talk about the uh, ridiculousness that is Black King at uh, one hundred and sixty-five <laughs> points. See, uh, and you were just what what were you saying about Bishop? What is his problem? Yes, he has overcosted black man syndrome. <laughs> black man syndrome, but look at Black King. He's not black, but his name is whatever. <laughs> he's not overcosted. He's eleven clicks, one hundred and sixty-five points, and gets ridiculously strong as he goes on. Uh, black King is amazing, and it is not because of how strong he gets necessarily. There are lots of characters who follow this formula. What is different between Black King and those characters is one, he is actually typically better and, you know, um, cheaper than most of those. Um, but the fact is, is thankfully, since he starts without wit uh, early on, he is more of a problem when he's not strong. Elaborate, you know what I mean? Elaborate. Meaning, like, if you look at, uh, um, oh, what's his name, Maelstrom, he mm -hmm. had the same concept, very, very strong at the end of his dial, but uh, up top he was so worthless that he wasn't even a threat. You know, but this guy's damage and attack and his outwit power are just high enough for him to be a, you know, a concern. You can't just ignore him, is the point, you know, because uh, he's enough of a threat. Yeah. I, 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 I like his connect energy absorption. It's just like if you keep just doing damage to him, he's like, I take tokens off. I'm going to just hit you harder and harder and harder. And, yeah, just keep hitting me. I'm coming to hit you next turn. Yeah. Well, and we, we cannot forget that, I mean, looking at the um, uh, 
the Brotherhood team base or whatever it is, the Hellfire Club, that he will also potentially be coming off of there, you know, in his prime, not in his weakness. So that'll be interesting to see, too. I mean, if you're playing a full 300-point or whatever uh, Hellfire Club and they get down towards the end of their life, you're like, they're almost dead. Crap, Black King. Bam! Right in the face. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, next up, uh, Smasher, real quickly. 86 points. Uh, he has a free action to choose a standard power. You didn't choose last turn. Uh, until your next turn, Smasher can use chosen power, but can't use any other powers. Well, that's uh, awful. Yeah. So, what, yeah. <laughs> what, what do you think about that? Um, I don't know. It's okay. Uh, the main thing... I mean, what can he use? What's what's exciting enough to throw away his uh, considerable offensive uh, ability? You've got things like regenerate, or not regenerate, but um, support, uh, perplex, outwit. I mean, uh, but I, w- I would but, say impervious and uh, invincible. But for eighty-six points, you know, I mean, that's good. Yeah, if he's pushed, you know, maybe you maybe you want to choose willpower or something so he can go. Or, you know, who knows what. But I, I do think that, despite the uh, how wild that power sounds, that it could be the fact that it takes his other powers away. Not only that, stops him from even being able to. Like you couldn't give him a power with Gizmo, you know, because yeah, because it would can't go use away. the others. Yeah. So because of that, I would say he's well costed. Interesting. If you wanted to use him, you could. But uh, he's not worthless, and he's not broken. You yeah. know, so he's he's, he's well balanced, frankly. So yeah. good for them. All right, uh, I'm gonna skip over Magneto's because I think that that's just a, a conversation and and it, it's a mixed bag. I, I, I will I will touch on the the Magneto's and that I think they're disappointing. You know, not that they're worthless, just that uh, not exciting. The the old one was set the bar so high. Yeah. You know, it's probably not their fault. Yeah, well, pretty much Proxy and I were working on tech on how to use uh, the Capture the Cape, uh, Capture the Cape Citadel missile base and uh, and a spiral, but it was it got to the point it was stupid, ridiculous. Is it even that good? I gotta remember what it does. It, it does like three damage to like a, a, a square and everybody around that square, but it, it was something that you would have to do turn one while all the groups while they're all grouped up. That it, it was yeah. silly. Okay, let's let's go to what I feel is one of the most brokenest figures in the set. Um, it's Hope Summers. Uh, six range, seventy-five points. Future Generation X Phoenix Force X Men keywords. Uh, her special power on attack: Omega Level Mutant. Give Hope Summers a free action. She can choose the powers of one chosen adjacent character until your next turn. There's a keyword that I'm hoping, and this is why I hate usually doing the previews and not looking at the official. Um, and and I'm, I'm hoping that they're missing the word standard. Because if they're not missing the word standard, watch out. Because there is a ton of special powers. That yeah, that, that, that's a real up. problem. Look, I was looking at it. I mean, if you look at standard, if you look at special powers... I wonder if the column on this, like, if you look at Gizmo's power, it specifically says, give Gizmo a free action. So what if she has a power that says, give Gizmo a free action? Does it even apply to her? I, I don't know. Yeah, it, it, but it, but not only that, you could just be like, well, I if, if I have a special power, it's like, this character can use, uh, you can you, you possess, like, shape change and outwit, you know, or, or something like that. And those powers are awesome. Uh, Mr. Sinister power. Like it, even we, I was talking with Proxy, and, and it was it pretty much went like this: if you copy Mister Sinister's power that says, you know, when they die, you can bring them back, the, but technically they wouldn't be removed from that square. So you would put that square, uh, uh, that character in a square adjacent to Mister Sinister. So if Mister Sinister died and you roll for it and you got it, you would just move Mister Sinister a square, and that's it. I, I mean, the, the, the issue comes in is I'm, I'm thinking that this was a misprint or, or a mistype by the person that put up the preview. Or they'll it, just elaborate on it. Or, or, yeah, or they're going to rat at this and just say, no, it's a standard power. Or, or, you can, or you get all of their powers. Because here's the thing. Okay, like let's go back and say Hope is, is teamed up with Shatterstar. Okay, so that means that Hope has Charge, uh, Flurry, Lace Claws, Fangs. Combat reflexes. 
okay, if if, if, if Hope is teamed up with uh, Jean Grey, she has TK and energy, uh, energy shield deflection, but she already has energy shield deflection. But pretty much you get to copy your the entire move set of another character. Let's let's get more ridiculous. You know what? This Hope says, the Thor. The the fear itself Thor or or the fear itself Odin. I, I would have said I mean if you look at this though, it's not worded normally. Like she can use the powers of one chosen adjacent character until your next turn. It doesn't say possessed or used by. You know, like what happens if, you know, the Infinity Gauntlet gives them powers, you know? Yeah. Or uh, you get shape change from uh, the bodyguard dude from um, Superman set. Uh, yeah. I, I forgot who it is, uh, but he takes the damage for you. But anyway, uh, there's that. I, I thought that that is utter crap. Uh, and so what you have to push her, you push her onto a running shot and perplex. Uh, not not only that, you could be like, hey, buddy, I get psychic blast and pulse wave. Like she put her next to the bug. Oh gosh, she'd be like, they get all the dials and everything. <laughs> um, anyway, going on, mutant jumpstart. Hope Summers can use empower and enhancement adjacent friendly characters with the X Men keyword modify their attacks by plus one. So she just she just becomes even more of a super powered support piece. I am pissed that she's she's not unique because she is not unique. It becomes very ridiculous, and then not only that, you combine her with the Phoenix Force keyword and some of those X Men that are coming out. I, I think we're just set up for a broken town. Your, your uh, thoughts since I've dominated the conversation? I think it's most like after looking at it this time. Uh, I actually think that it it wouldn't be entirely broken if she had that power, and I mean if it, it allowed special powers. And by that, I mean it wouldn't be entirely broken considering the other crazy, stupid, broken stuff that they've done. Um, so it wouldn't be entirely out of, you know, what they've been doing. However, the way it's worded, I, I don't even think, this doesn't even clarify if it's powers they can use or have, so um, I wonder if this is almost just a summary of what some person read on it. You know, like, oh, it says they can use the adjacent powers, you know, and that's just whatever. Yeah, like um, I said, I, I really, really hope that this is a, a misprint, and I'm hoping that it just says, hey, guess what? You can copy their all their the standard powers that somebody else has. And it's like, bam, that's awesome. But yeah. as, as it's written as it is, it's like, no, this is broken. Well, special powers simply aren't made to be copied at all. I mean, so they're not made for it. If you try and, like, apply the logic to it, it doesn't work very well at all. So, I mean, I would even, like, I'd be like, the, the game's made for it to be standard power, so it almost doesn't make sense um, for it to be that way. However, that said, yeah, you get a bunch of hopes and somebody with a bunch of powers. You get the bug, one of the vampires, that shatter star. You uh, know, I mean, there's a lot hey, of stuff. Uh, what was it? Um, uh, Brother Voodoo. Brother yeah. Voodoo. He, she can br be a better Brother Voodoo than Brother Voodoo can. No, she. His thing is a trait. His mind control. I looked at that. What I did the first thing when I oh, realized. Oh, cloud. Yeah, yeah. When I realized that his um, that she. Um, could copy special powers. That the first thing you look for. Well, no, the first thing I did is I went down and looked at all the unique characters and prime characters because unique or prime characters are usually unique or prime because they have some functional game element that is too strong or shouldn't be, you know, yeah, too predominant. And that's a way to make it predominant, which is, again, why... I don't think that she exists the way we think she might. Yeah, be. like I said, I hope not. Uh, moving on, Shadow King. Uh, really quick, Demon of the Astral Plane. Opposing characters can't counter Shadow King's powers or modify his combat values uh, unless they can use mind control, which I think is really awesome. Uh, Xavier's equal, no superior. Shadow King can use mind control as if he had a range value of ten. When he does, he is not dealt unavoidable damage, and hit targets may be assigned two free actions instead of one. Uh, one of the two actions must be a move action. Uh, pure psionic being, Shadow King ignores all but one damage dealt by adjacent characters. When Shadow King is dealt damage after actions resolve, uh, roll a d6 on a result of three through six, heal him of one damage. This is why, like, I, I got frustrations with Cable, because technically... Shadow Cable? King is, is, I mean not Cable, uh, Bishop. Shadow King is a better version of Bishop. I, oh, well. I'm, I'm feeling. You know, uh, because he has all that, I don't take, 
damage from nobodies up front well, it's, and up, Yeah, but you can still range attack the crap out of them. You know, you just can't go punch them. I think they're trying to suggest that his physical form is, you know, not there to be punched. Yeah. But it, it will actually put a damper on all those, uh, uh, oh, what are they, uh, charge, you know, Book of the Skulls teams. Yeah. The, the mind control with a range of 10 and not taking feedback and giving a free action uh, to, to move, I think that that's excellent. Yeah, uh, no, it's good. It's it, And that used to be really overpowered, you know, the not taking feedback, but they actually kind of nerfed the feedback so much that uh, it's only a little bit of a boost. Yeah. Uh, so overall, I think this is like one that people should pick up. Uh, jumping to uh, Super Rares... Uh, I hate to say it, like, there really isn't much in the level of super rares that I, I can see. It's like, oh my gosh, you gotta go get that. I mean, I love my X-Men. Um, I mean, I, that was a book I read when I was growing up, but I don't see anything that really makes me want to play X-Men, like, just in general. I mean, I love them. I still love the dial. I'm glad they made them. Um, but... I don't see you really being driven by that. Um, None of the super rares particularly get my attention at all. They, um, they actually seem mostly like odd choices. You know, I, I don't understand it. So, whatever. Yeah, uh, they're they're fine. I, yeah, I don't necessarily. I don't look at them and see that they're bad or anything. Uh, I just you know nothing to get too excited about. Yeah, uh, Exodus and uh, Mikhail Rasputin were two that I was like, oh, you're sort of cool. Um, I mean, definitely with Exodus, with his starting numbers, he's pretty good. Um, he's just, he doesn't have a dominable, but it makes him a prime candidate for the utility belt and yeah. to, to be an offensive cannon. Um, but, I mean, other than that, I mean, that's pretty much it. Uh, any comments on any of the chases other than that they're hypersonic speed monsters? Um, the Colossus is amazing. I love Colossus. That figure looks awesome. I love all these. I read, you know, the stuff. Um and so I'm excited for them all. Um, Colossus with nine range. Colossus with nine range. Never thought uh, to see the day. But, uh, you know, they're all cool. I think they're, they'll be fun to play together. Yeah. Uh, I hope there's an ATA. I mean, they're all 295. I hope that they put, like, an ATA on them or something. Yeah. I guess I could do a hammer if I do. Because if I do all, all five of them together, it's what, like, 1,500 points? It's um, ridiculous. So, you can play them at 150. I, I think yeah, that that would be the better. For, that's no fun. For well, for a couple of them, it, I think it's probably like a better deal. I want to do it. I want to do 1,500 points of them and see how they fight the kaiju. <laughs> <laughs> kaiju, or yeah, I think that's where you would have them. They'd be monsters versus monsters, technically. Um. A anyway, uh, moving on. Uh, let's see. Uh, team actually, team? uh, I need to go. Yeah, I, I, gotta, I gotta get ready for that tournament. Yeah, real quick, is there anything from the team bases? Oh, uh, well, let's just cover the uh, Shi'ar Imperial Guard because that's the one that I think we are both agreeing is the most broken. Yeah, the figures that didn't stand out to me as being that interesting on the, on any of them. Uh, Gladiator's cool. Um, the uh, I did like like I have to stop and talk about uh, for like all of a second. Um, one of my favorites. We got a new Iceman. Oh yeah, he's, he's decent. So <laughs> okay. that's all they can ever manage with Iceman for some reason. The best one seems to still be um, uh, the Tab App. The Tab App. This one's not bad though. His defense is pretty weak, but whatever. Uh, Archangel, one of my favorite characters ever. I love Archangel. I love that I'm going to have a new one. Um, He's got this little, like, healing thing, which is cool. Um, his dial is not anywhere near as powerful as his old one, although similarly costed. Uh, he doesn't have his death happiness. Um, <laughs> but whatever. I'll probably use him at some point because I love Archangel. Yeah. Uh, that's it. We, we can skip down now. Okay. Uh, Shi'ar Imperial Guard. Uh, the 300-point version... I think is where we can just say, hey, guess what, Justice League? We can fight you. If you roll one of these imperviouses, 
that's it. Like, <laughs> you're going, you're in trouble now. Their problem with the Justice League is going to be their 10 attack. I mean, the Justice League is going to have 19, possibly 20 defense. I mean, they may just never hit them. Well, and, and here's in time, the, anyway. I look at it, if, if, if the Justice League goes first and gets that first attack in, they're going to get two attacks in. If, if she are able to roll one impervious, then that's it. Because then they're going to either going to they're they're going to be on pulse wave, either way, or psychic blast. So it, they're going to they're going to be hurt. So I mean yeah, that's that's how I look at it. I think there's a lot of roles involved. Maybe I'm missing something down in the like uh, asset dial or something. But just looking at the dial, I feel like there's every possibility that they will just miss the Justice League all three times with their attack. Um, now they only need to hit once. Once they hit that once, all the follow-ups are going to be easy. So yeah. they do hit right off the bat. Yeah, the Justice League is probably going down. Yeah. But uh, that is not a given. Yeah, and even more so, I would say, it's like if the Justice League decides that they were going to perplex up their defense and then hit the Justice League, I mean, hit the Shiar Imperial Guard twice, and so it would do two, and if they roll impervious on either of those hits, then they're going to be on running shot, 11 attack, pulse wave, 5 damage to range combat expert. I mean, it, it's sort of GG right there, because they're going to run a shot in, pulse wave for 5 damage, and then do a, a standard attack for, or they can, no, they wouldn't even do a standard attack. They would move, be base to the Justice League, then flurry them for 5, so that they would get 3, uh, technically 3 attacks in, where the Justice League can only get 2. I mean, the Shi'ar Imperial Guard has no incentive whatsoever to come to the Justice League. You know, if, if even if they don't roll in per, they're still on hypersonic speed, psychic blast. So they can do ranged action, psychic blast, hypersonic speed up, hit them, be based, and then flurry. And it's like, you know... I, like, I, I would almost there. suggest for the Imperial Guard to spend their first turn pushing. You know, if they can get out of that second click, um, they can teleport to the Justice League, pulse wave them. Pulse to get, <laughs> well, to get their attack down to an eight, you know, that, and it also makes, or their defense down to an eight, no matter what, and then it also makes it so that only their probability control works. Um, oh, yeah. And then, so that's your best shot. Uh, and then you can also, you can, in the same turn, since you get three actions, you could teleport to them, pulse wave, and then flurry. You know, so if your pulse wave is successful, you might just kill them. I mean, that's 15 damage um, if all of those connect. And assuming the first one does, the rest should. Uh, let's look. Justice League. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, also the big thing while you're looking that up, I think region at the end dial is what gives them the longevity that they need. Uh, forget... Forget the sidestep shenanigans. That's just a waste. And and I really would say them at 500 points, like, just, I, it, it can be awesome just to say, like, interplanetary jump, pulse wave, you son, for six. You know, um, that awesomeness, yeah, I can say bravo. Welcome, welcome to the, the big leagues with that. Uh, but really, I think what makes them sort of stand out to me is that the last three clicks of regen, them having a chance of coming back and combining, you know, a little bit of luck. You, you just say, I've saved my interplanetary jump for this moment. Bam, you know, I'm on the other end of the field. I'm going to go to my other side of the map, someplace where my opponent can't get to me real easily, and hope I can regen uh, with my, you know, multiple actions. And then do that, and I'm back in the game, you know. Use that little sidestep as a free action, and get up in there, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was just looking at it. If they hit all three times, they'll kill the Justice Yeah. Game. Happens to be. So, yeah. Um, pretty handily, actually, with about four extra damage. So, yeah. Three extra damage. So, whatever. Yeah. But uh, they will get Super Senses in there. Yeah. All right, well, here's what I'm going to do, people. Uh, since Megas Lois Man is going to be getting off in my Skype recorder, uh, we'll stop recording the moment he gets off. What I will do, uh, for all you lovely viewers out there, I'm going to continue to record and comment on all the characters uh, that are in uh, the, the standard pack and the other team bases and some other figures that 
we sort of glossed over real quick. I might go back to the chases. So I can leave this on if you want to just continue the No, 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 that's all right. All right, so what we'll do is next episode, which is coming up right after this, uh, we're going to continue talking about Wolverine and X-Men. Thank you very much, and I'll see you next episode. Bye, guys. I'm into comic books, figures on the wall. She's into looking good, Vicky C's got a law. And she loves my flaws, yeah, yeah, she's not ashamed. I'm a Peter Parker, she's my Mary Jane. She's my Mary Jane, she's my Mary Jane. She's my Mary Jane, she's my Mary Jane. She's my Mary Jane, she's my Mary Jane. I'm a Peter Parker, she's my Mary Jane. I'm a big nerd around her, but she's cool around me. Never knew how she found me, electric, but she grounds me. And she loves my flaws, she accepts them all. When the darkness comes, I will get the call. I will swing down, swing down the city.